listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the x everyone. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 800-610-7035. Email x at x TV.com and all social media sites, x Radio TV. And you can listen to the x 724-365, as well as the show from 8 p.m. until midnight, Monday through Friday at www.exoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Elijah Stevens. Uh, he has degrees in philosophy and psychology. He was deployed in Operation Iraqi Freedom uh, for 2004. He has been the, or he was the executive, uh, vineyard executive pastor for seven years, uh, studied three years at Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry, and he currently teaches Bible classes at Bethel Church in Reading, California. He's pursuing a master's in apologetics at Biola, and he's making a documentary about miracles that are collaborated by medical evidence. For more information, go to simplykingdom.com. And Elijah, welcome to the Exxon. Uh, thanks so much. Elijah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you know, uh, what was it that brought you to um, being a, a preacher, teaching the word of the gospel, talking about the Bible? When did all this happen? Yeah. Um, well, that, that's a long question. Um, I have always been drawn toward uh, the supernatural and I had a uh, very powerful supernatural uh, experience as, as a young man um, where I prayed, God, if you're real, show me in a way that I know that I know. Mm-hmm. And nothing really happened. Uh, and I went for about a year, and I told God, like, I want to party. Um, show me in a way that I know that I know. And I'll start reading the Bible, see if this is a fairy tale or not. And I start reading it, and I get to the point in Deuteronomy, that's the fifth book of the Bible, where God takes Moses up into heaven. Mm -hmm. And I just have this radical experience where I hear a voice in my head say, uh, you don't want to miss out on what I have for you in your life. And I just feel God's presence, and I just start... uh, screaming like, don't kill me, God, don't kill me, because I just knew he was real and holy, and it just began just increasing in my heart, and uh, I gave my life to uh, Jesus after that, and so that kind of is what shifted me toward uh, ministry. Uh, when you had this revelation, was this prior to you being deployed in, into the uh, Gulf War scenario? No, uh, I, I, I was very young at the time. I, I would say hmm. 13, 14 years old. Wow. Um, I, I was just very aware of our existential condition of, you know, if there is a God that mm-hmm. changes life, if the supernatural exists, it changes life. If there is no God, that changes the way you live. And so I, I wanted to clarify that for myself. Why would you? Th- why were you afraid that God would kill you if you read the Bible and you understood that He was kind, compassionate, and He was your Father? Uh, I, I wasn't afraid of that. I think I just became aware 
of not being in right relationship with God and just terror of feeling his presence for the first time. I think after that, mm-hmm. I gave my life to the Lord, and I felt immediate peace. And I think it was just a moment where God was communicating simultaneously, like, I am a holy God, and, like, come to me, and I, I, I will make your life right through Jesus. And so uh, that... I, I don't think I questioned him as a good father at that point. I think it was just I saw his largeness, and it terrified me is maybe the best description. All right, stand by, Elijah. You and I have to take our first break. Exxon Nation, Elijah Stevens is our guest. His website is simplykingdom.com, and we'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. www.exxonradiotv.com is our radio site. Send me your emails, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Exo Nation, uh, Elijah Stevens is our guest this hour, www.simplykingdom.com. Tell me about the miracles that you have witnessed in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, there's several things that I would say I, I think are legitimate miracles that I've, I've seen with my own eyes. Um, one is I had a church secretary, and she was uh, sick. She had some type of uh, lung issue. Her doctor had been treating her mm-hmm. with it for a while, and she calls me from church one day and says, Elijah, I, I can't finish out the day. I need to go home. I'm sick. And just before I hang up the phone, um, she or I offer to pray for her, actually. And I pray a quick little prayer, just God touch her, bless her, heal her. You know, in the back of my mind, I just feel like saying, and just send your angels to touch her and she wasn't someone that really particularly believed that anything supernatural or paranormal happened today Mm -hmm. and um so that night she is in bed and um she wakes up her husband's not there because he's a contractor and he's working on a house uh out of state um and a light is shining into her and uh, she thinks, well, maybe I'm dying. She couldn't breathe very well at the time. And then she hears two men, and uh, they're standing, like, right next to the bed. And she hears one say, get her up. Um, she's, she, she, she won't live if, if she doesn't get air. And so um, they help her up. They walk her to the bathroom and... Uh, she turns on the light and then they disappear. And uh, she tells me about this the next week in a staff meeting. And uh, she just uh, tells me how, you know, she's in tears and she's like, this is just a moment that showed me how much mm-hmm. God loved me. And, and I thought I had been forgotten about. And so, um, yeah, that, that deeply impacted me about just how, God cares about the trivial things in people's lives, and uh, he just radically loves people. Okay, who are the they that you were, to, you know, that you were talking about in this case with uh, your uh, with your secretary? I assume it's some type of angel, uh, but you can never know for certain. Um, 
but that would be the best explanation I can come up with, and that's what she mm-hmm. assumed it was as well. Let me ask you this. Why would the angels have to get her to stand up to do a healing? Yeah, I think it was because she couldn't breathe. Like, she was having a lung issues, and they spoke out loud, like, get her up. She can't breathe. She's going to die. And so I don't know why that's the case. I just am trying to relay the story as accurately as she told it to me. Tell me about the man you saw healed uh, with Jason Chin. Yeah. Um, in, in our church sometimes uh, we do something called uh, a treasure hunt, which is we just kind of go out and minister to people. Sometimes you'll give them clothes mm-hmm. or, or food, whatever. They're your treasure. And um, we're driving down the road looking for migrant workers. And I am talking to this girl, and I ask her, what's the coolest thing you've ever seen God do with your own eyes? And she said, one time I prayed for a man with a bone-on-bone knee injury, and uh, he got radically healed. And so it reminded me of a guy I had prayed for at church a week, week or two earlier, who had a bone-on-bone knee injury. Uh, I believe his name was Dave, and he, it had happened in a motorcycle accident uh, 30 years earlier. He had a cane. You know, you could just see the pain as he stepped on that knee because uh, it didn't have cartilage. And um, as we're driving down the road, I think to myself, if I ever see Dave again, you know, I'll just tell him that story of her seeing some guy held and encourage uh, him and offer to pray again. Well, as we're driving down the road, he passes me in the opposite lane. He's sitting in a truck. There's someone else driving. And I tell my friend Jason, like, flag him down. And so we flag him down, and we go into this parking lot of this lumber yard. And I retell him the story and everything that happens, and we pray for him. And uh, he starts jumping up and down on his knee. And then he falls to the ground, and he's just crying. And I thought, oh, no, maybe he's re-injured himself. Mm -hmm. And then he just gets up and runs off, and he doesn't come back. And so I start talking to the lady who who was driving him originally, and uh, she said, he hasn't ran in 30 years. And so after a while, he still hasn't come back. And so we just get in our car, and he's dr- our, and we drive off, and we see him on the side of the road, continuing to run with his hands up in the air, just saying, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. You could see his lips, like, moving, and we just honk and drive on. Can you uh, can you tell me about how you learn to renew your mind using a tally counter? Yeah, um, one of the things that I suffered from was a ton of abuse as a child. Like my mom would beat me for hours at a time. Um, like blood would just drip out of my legs, uh, and I would go into shock. And so I really um, thought I was worthless. I, I would you know, all the time in my mind, just mm-hmm. say, like, you're stupid, you're fat, no one loves you. And uh, I, I got a tally counter, and basically it's something you click, and it'll count up a number. So sometimes mm-hmm. they use them at basketball games yeah. to count the people coming inside. And uh, every time I would think a negative thought, like, I'm worthless, I would literally make myself say the opposite, like, God loves me. Um, I'm valuable in his sight. Sure. And I began doing that over a series of, of months and uh, radically changed my life. I, I, I would do it a thousand times a day sometimes uh, because, like, the way you think determines who you are. It determines how you see God, how you see other people. And I just realized, like, I had become a victim of my thoughts 
and it helped me intentionally shift them so that I lived in freedom. So if you don't love yourself, no one else will, right? Uh, that That's true. And if you don't think positively, mm-hmm. what you'll end up doing is wasting your entire life believing the lies you tell yourself and uh, you'll be stuck for the rest of your life hating yourself bitter um, filled with unforgiveness and sometimes the only way out is to take a season of life and make it about like I will learn to think positively even when you don't feel like it and I know there's a lot of depressed people out there I would just say get a tally counter and do it for 30 days so by having this tally counter, if I understand you right, what you do is every time you have a negative thought, you click it? You no, know, you, uh, cl- you think the opposite and say the opposite and then give yourself a click. It's like a scoreboard for every time you do the right thing. Mm-hmm. And so I started out giving myself 10 a day and then I'd just make a goal like I'm doing a hundred and I would watch my perspective on life change almost instantly like you can't declare a hundred healthy things and it not change your world like my wife loves me I love my wife I've got a good life thank you God for my family thank you God for blessing stuff like that uh and 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 it really helped with the depression and the anxiety and the fear a ton. But what happens if a person isn't a religious person? How can they get help? Um, then do uh, self-help stuff. If, if you're not religious, mm-hmm. uh, say something positive. Like, positive thinking isn't living in denial. It's not saying there isn't bad. It's choosing to focus on the good stuff and the way we change our thoughts is with our words. And so, like, if you'll make yourself say, like, I'm grateful for my life, or anything that you find positive, it, it will transform your mind. But if a person's not religious, wouldn't God, mm-hmm. wouldn't God still help them? Uh, I, I, I think God would definitely still help them. There's, mm-hmm. n- you know, God is generous and kind to all. Um, but I, I think you have to speak what you feel um, is real in your heart. And so for the non-religious person, simply thanking whoever's there or... Mm-hmm. I think helps people connect with God. Like, I think a lot of people don't feel loved by God or don't feel close to God, and it's more of a mental uh, block than it is uh, God's heart toward them. And so, like, I tell a lot of people who don't feel close to God, believe it or not, just declare, you know, God loves me. He's here now. And oftentimes they'll begin to experience a shift in their emotions, but sometimes that does something in the supernatural and paranormal world um, that helps them connect with God. Stand by, Elijah. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Exxon Nation Elijah Stevens is our guest this hour. And we're going to be coming back and talking to Elijah about his film that, uh, that he has produced. His website, Simply Kingdom. Dot com And Elijah and I will be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center here in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada and around the world on our broadcast family of affiliates and satellite programming providers. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away. to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net.
Elijah Stevens is our guest at this hour, XO Nation, www.simply simplykingdom.com that's www.simplykingdom.com i understand as an adult you had ptsd how did you how did you cope with that um <clears throat> as i was talking about before the news break a lot of it came through renewing my mind mm-hmm. uh through using a tally counter um and uh, I would say that that's the majority of, of what helped me the, the most. Okay, I can understand how the tally counter would have helped you as a ch- you know with all the negativity that you were going mm-hmm. through. But how does that work with PTSD? Um, well, with PTSD, what happens is a lot of times it's biological. Like a lot of people think that. Uh, Mental stuff is merely in your mind, but when your body experiences a trauma, uh, it saves it in the muscle memory. And I think for me, um, like I would experience rage, I would experience, uh, you know, anger or whatever. Mm -hmm. But taking care, control of my thoughts helps me live a functional life and go after goals, and that brought me a lot of happiness and joy. And I would say I still experience a lot of the symptoms. It's just like I'm not out of it for days at a time, and I'm not, like, destroying my life. And so um, I, I think that's how it helped. I, I, I think a lot of people try to get rid of the symptomology rather, rather than go, Look, if this never changes, how do I want to live toward people? Do I want to shut myself in the house and feel sorry for myself, or do I want to go after my dreams that God has given me? Was the PTSD as a result of your time in the Army? Uh, it was from the abuse as a child. Um, I had a rare, relatively uh, mundane tour, mm-hmm. but it was from just hours of abuse as a child. Was was the was the PTSD diagnosed clinically as a direct result um, of the of of the abuse as a child? Um, it it wasn't diagnosed clinically because the trend in psychology currently is to trend away from labels. Um, but like my psychologist would talk about it mm-hmm. in that way, so I, I never got a piece of paper that said this. This is PTSD. We would talk about living uh, life with PTSD and stuff of that nature. Yeah, because uh, you know what we hear on the news all the time about the the veterans who are coming back from the Middle East theaters who are suffering from PTSD. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's a reality, and I think mm-hmm. a lot of people don't understand it who've never been through it. Uh, but basically, what happens is your your body. Uh, gets overwhelmed emotionally from stress or traumatic event, and it's like it releases all of these chemicals at once, and your body just doesn't go back. And so um, sounds and sights and smells uh, re-trigger that chemical release. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, you might start shaking for no reason or uh, experiencing sweating or nightmares. Um, and, and, and it's hard for a person to live where their emotions randomly uh, just just go so negative. So what would trigger your episodes of PTSD that you can point to your the abuse of your childhood and say this is what triggered my PTSD um, I well see what happens is just randomly through life uh, a situation gets a little stressful and something just flips and you're at level 10 rage and or um, you're met with a very small task, like your wife being like, hey, take the laundry downstairs. 
and it just flips on either rage or depression because your emotions were so out of whack from from the trauma. Mm-hmm. And so um, it, it, it's really, really hard to live. Um, and no one wants this. It's not being lazy. It's not being selfish. It's just their body's been through a trauma, and that's how the human body reacts sometimes. Tell me about your film. Um, yeah, I'm making a documentary now about uh, miracles corroborated by medical evidence. I'm trying to find cases and work with doctors to, uh, yeah, demonstrate that uh, there is uh, stories out there where people say, I got healed, and there's documenta- a documentation trail showing the uh, before and after results. How are you going to do that with, with a patient doctor confidentiality in place? Um, well, a, a patient has access to their records in, in mm-hmm. the States under a law called HIPAA, and so they can simply sign a waiver, and uh, the the doctor has to release them. Um, some doctors want to appear on film, some don't. Um, the majority don't because there's, you know, possible legal issues um, involved. There's their credibility, but I, I want to open that door up for the medical professionals as well. Why would a doctor want to admit that a patient was cured by a miracle? Why would he want to or not want to? Why would he want to? Um, I don't know. Um, There's religious reasons. Um, If a doctor let's say, is a Christian and the person was healed by prayer in Jesus' name. Some are motivated by those issues. Others are motivated by, I simply want to tell the truth. Um, But it's hard for a scientist to say this was a miracle, this was not a miracle. Uh, What they can say is there's no natural explanation, and um, you're left to theorize what is the best explanation for this. Uh, Lady goes in, she's sick, she's dying, Mm -hmm. going on hospice, gets prayer. Uh, The next day, she's completely healed. You've got to ask yourself, well, is there something more than the natural that's going on there? But how can you you take um, a case and just because there is no proof for or no proof against say well you know since there's no proof saying that that there was no medical intervention that it has to be a miracle Uh, you don't do that Um, what you do find is there's a high correlation between prayer and people claiming to be healed Mm -hmm. like we're not finding people washing the dishes. We're not finding them going on a hike in the mountains. Uh, the majority, all, to nearly all of the cases I found, are people going, I got, I was sick, mm-hmm. nearly dying. I got prayer, and I experienced instantaneous to near instantaneous healing. How many cases like that do you have? Um, we've got a lot we're looking through, and mm-hmm. we're trying to filter out what are the best ones for the film. I mean, I'm, I'm, I was talking to a lady today. Her stomach, her son, uh, from age zero to twelve, had a digestive disorder. He mm-hmm. couldn't eat. Um, he had autoimmune disorder. Uh, he couldn't walk. He was in a wheelchair. Um, just because his body was failing, they were told, uh, you know, your son may make it another two years. And um, <clears throat> they decide to come to a church in the U.S., uh, Bethel Church in Redding, California, to get prayer. 
and uh, the son, after, uh, immediately after prayer, felt hungry for the first time and was able to mm-hmm. eat within a few months, was able to walk um, completely living a normal life now, uh, no signs of an autoimmune disorder. And so that, I think, is in the, mo- the best likely explanation is a miracle, in my opinion. Why would somebody have to go to Reading, California to have the prayer work for them? If prayer is powerful and if prayer is powered by God, couldn't that person be cured or be healed anywhere where they are as long as people are praying for them and he is praying in concert with them? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, and I, I didn't want to in any way give, like, hey, you've got to come to a particular place. Mm-hmm. I, that was just a particular detail of the story. Um, God heals people all over the world. Uh, one of the most interesting things I think I found in my studies is in 2008 or seven. I can't remember, uh, a research company named Pew surveyed 35,000 Americans and found that 32% uh, have either witnessed a divine healing or experienced one for themselves. So that's one out of three people. But it all depends on where they. Sur- it all depends on where their survey was taken as well. Because if the survey was sure, taken in the sure. deep south, then the Bible Belt, then that could be explained. But if the same survey was sure. done in da- uh, downtown uh, New York, you know the survey would probably be totally different. Uh, it was a cross population of of the U.S. And so, um, what what the case is mm-hmm. is that. Um, there are a lot of people that uh, will claim I've had something that I cannot explain uh, change, change my life. Uh, in 2004, the Louis Finkelstein Institute took a survey of a thousand doctors and asked them, uh, "Do you believe miracles can happen?" Seventy-four percent came back with yes. Out of a thousand doctors, fifty-eight percent came back and said, uh, "I have seen something miraculous happening uh, during treatment before." That is, I I was expecting one outcome, mm-hmm. and then something beyond what science can produce happened. So, and so if if, go if ahead. prayer does all these miraculous healings. Why are there? Why are the hospitals packed with people? Why don't people just pray for everyone in the hospital so that they can get the hell out and they can be cured? Something doesn't I, I seem so, something question. does not seem um, right with this entire scenario. Yeah, um, I, I am not claiming that prayer cures people all the time. Um, what I'm saying is there are a lot of people mm-hmm. who say. I have been healed by prayer, um, and that there's medical evidence to corroborate their story. I can't tell you what percentage of people um, that that actually counts as a miracle. Right. I, of that uh, 32, 35 percent I was telling you in the Pew survey, mm-hmm. I doubt most of them were healed uh, right. by prayer. But that's what people are reporting, and if you look at people who are reporting healings, Eventually, you start finding a small number that have been healed, if that makes sense. It, it, it does. It does. But when it comes to these, these, these healings, how many of these cases are psychosomatic? How many of these cases were for life-threatening diseases? For example, mm-hmm. heart disease, cancer, breast cancer, the serious diseases... How many, how many um, of the cases that, that you're working on or that you're looking at were life-threatening diseases that these changes can be corroborated by more than one medical practitioner? Sure. Um, I, uh, here, here's a case. Uh, Susan Starr mm-hmm. uh, went into shock. Her colon erupted, um, <clears throat> and it messed up her autonomic nervous system, which wow. is the part that... Uh, regulates your heart, mm-hmm. um, 
everything, and uh, she couldn't not go to the bathroom right. on herself. She would faint. Um, miserable life, and uh, her, her, she starts dying. They put her on hospice, and uh, she's taking 60 medications a day, one to make her heart beat fast enough, one to make slow it down from beating too fast. Um, enough medication to regulate her entire autonomic nervous system. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you don't put people on hospice unless you think they're going to die within the next, let's say, 90 days to six months. And so um, she gets prayer and is instantly better and no longer requires any medication at all. She's instantly better or instantly healed? Instantly healed. Um, and so you can watch her testimony on YouTube mm -hmm. and there's a lot of, of them like that. Yeah. Um, and it's right, you're right to be skeptical. Psychosomatic disorders exist. Yep. The placebo effect is real. Yep. Um, people fake stuff all the time, yep. but I think miracles also occur. And I think you can look at the data and say, this person was legitimately sick. There's a trail of medical records. They claim to have got prayer at this point. This is when their medical history changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think there's a lot of people out there like that. Stand by, Stephen. You and I have to take our final break. Exo Nation. I'm sorry. I called you Stephen again. Elijah Stevens is our guest this hour, Exonation, www.simplykingdom.com. That's www.simplykingdom.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this break. Send me an email. Tell me what you, the members of the Exonation, think. Do miracles really happen? Exon at exonradiotv.com. I look forward to receiving your email. Elijah and I will return on the other side of the short break. Don't go away. Listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Elijah Stevens is our special guest uh, this hour, Exonation. His website is www.simplykingdom.com. Uh, Elijah, what about natural phenomenon that looks like miracles? How do you differentiate the two? Um, I think you just have to learn what natural phenomenon that looks like miracles mm -hmm. are. There's spontaneous remission, sometimes certain diseases, uh, you know, go into remission, there are parts of the human body that actually grow back. Uh, the liver's been known to do this. Um, and so you study what it's what fakes are. You study the placebo effect, mm -hmm. and you study psychosomatic disorders so that you know, hey, when you start looking at miracle claims, what options there are out there. You know, we've had people on this show who say that they go out of body and they go to another dimension where the aliens work on people in a different dimension and when they come back, the people are cured. We've had people come on the show talking to us about uh, ancient remedies that cure people. We've had people come on the show who say that they've gone to... Uh, gypsies and holistic healers and come away with uh, with so-called miraculous um, healings. With all these miraculous healings that so many people can do, once again, I bring up the question about the state 
of the medical community, the number of people who are getting sicker each and every day, the the way that our medical practitioners and professionals are overworked, if it is just a matter of people believing in the power of prayer as well as the the possibility of of miracles happening wouldn't more people be be going to church instead of the numbers decreasing um not necessarily um i i don't think it has anything to do with whether you believe in prayer or not i think it god is good and, but uh, why did why did you know, if if God is good if God is good why does He only pick certain people and not cure everyone at the same time? Why I have no way of answering you know, that. Like, All I can do is point you toward cases where the only factor I can think mm-hmm. of is prayer, and those people will say I was dying, now I'm not dying. You know, I, the only I, thing I, that changed I, was I, getting prayer. I had a grandmother who yeah. died at home with generalized cancer, and you could actually hear the tumors breaking her ribs. And each and every night, each and every day, she prayed for one more chance. Ask God for one more chance. She never got it. And I can give you story after story after story after story after story of people who have begged Good people who went to church all the time, who were pillars in the industry, who did everything for everybody, and just asked for one chance, and they were ignored. So why does God choose some and neglect the other? I guess I'll have to wait and, until I meet him one day and ask him. I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight, uh, Elijah. We have to go right now at Exo Nation. We'll be back tomorrow night at... 8 o'clock is once again we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the X-Zone. So until tomorrow night, always remember, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the light. Good night, everyone.